Good morning, dear friends. It is so good to be with, together again one more time. And as you give a few minutes before you begin your activities for this day, to be alone with God, to hear his voice. And I pray that the word that I'm going to share with you will be a great blessing for you. And uh, today's meditation is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, which says, For the message of the cross is a foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. What a marvelous and wonderful verse this is. The message of the cross or the gospel is actually the power of God to save everyone who chooses to believe in Jesus. The message of the cross proclaims how Christ gave his life to pay the penalty for our sin. It tells of Jesus' sacrifice for us, celebrates the life provided by that sacrifice, and it requires people to make a personal choice um, about how they will respond to Christ's sacrifice. Now, this message involves wisdom and truth, but also God's active power to bring spiritual salvation, healing, freedom from sin, and a freedom from uh, uh, demons and a rescue from sin's power and influences and uh, sin's curses and uh, its guilt. These are the things that is involved in the salvation provided by the message of the cross or the gospel of Jesus Christ. It not only brings a spiritual salvation, but also healing for our physical life as well. Healing for our minds and emotions and uh, our, 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 our all-round health. And this is what the gospel of Jesus Christ truly gives us. And remember, only when and if a person is free from sin and its hold over him, he can truly say that uh, he is free from slavery. Now, no wonder Apostle Paul says in um, Romans chapter 2, verse 2, For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, there was one moment, one time in his life, he realizes that no philosophy, no science, no religion, and no any other message can bring salvation and freedom from sin for humanity, except the message that emanate from the cross of Jesus Christ. And so he resolved that wherever he goes and declare the gospel of Christ, he will declare only one message, Jesus Christ and him crucified. Let me give you a picture of the cross of which Paul says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. Now, before Jesus died on the cross, the, that was the symbol of the cross. It was a symbol of uh, the following things. Listen carefully. The cross is a place of utter humiliation, a place of curse in its ugliest manifestation. The cross was a place of the ugliest manifestation of sin. It was a place of a revelation how dark sin is and can be. And the cross is, was a place of a cruelty and brutality in their highest forms. 
uh, the cross is also a place of a man's worst form of a helplessness, loneliness, darkness, fear, and rejection. And that was the cross before Jesus Christ died on the cross. And Jesus went to this cross of loneliness and darkness and a terrible manifestation of green sins, evil manifestation and its influences on humanity. And yet, listen to this, friends, God, how God could take something, a symbol of the worst, and then turn it to a symbol of a something best, admirable, that the men and the women in all nations wear around their neck proudly as a symbol of the greatest religious faith under the sun. Only God could have done it, and he did it. Ever since Jesus died on the cross, it was transformed into a symbol of the number one faith in the world. The cross was the place and instrument God has chosen to be the place and instrument of the greatest revelation of what his divine love is and forgiveness is and the only means of a reconciliation between God and man. What a, an amazing, miraculous manifestation has the cross become. All because Jesus Christ died on that cross carrying upon human body that's why he took the uh, took a human body for himself upon that body the condemnation and the wrath of god against sin and the sinners though god and has has always loved the sinners and he therefore planned this great salvation from the eternity past that his son would come and he would take upon his body the curses and wrath and condemnation over sin. My friends, whatever Jesus Christ has gone through 2,000 years ago and then ultimate death by shedding his blood and giving up his life, that humanity may have a cleansing and uh, a, 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 the possibility of a being freed from the ugliness and influence of demon powers and sins curses through the blood of Jesus Christ. And it is by that blood we are redeemed. And ever since Jesus died on the cross, the meaning of the cross is changed. It is no longer a perk place of a curse. It is a place where you and I can come and our sins will be rolled away at the foot of the cross. My friends, I pray that you are cleansed. And you have believed and you have accepted and acknowledged this Jesus who rose again on the third day, winning the greatest victory in the universe or in heaven or earth or seas or under the world. Over sins and its influence and effect. Over Satan who caused man to sin and thus separated from this loving God over death itself. And those who now believe in him will be free. We will continue this same meditation and I pray that you will find this 
message of the cross for your good and for your family's good and for your friends and others with whom you will share this good news of the possibility of them finding a new life in Jesus Christ and eternal life. God bless you as you become a witness to this truth. Amen.